Hello, in this video, we will demonstrate how to record call operation actions in sequence diagram. Who knows simulation toolkit? Uh, they know that um, sequence diagram generator allows you to record uh, execution trace. Most common things to have is like state machines communicating through ports, and then you can record send signal actions. Uh, and uh, you can record state change, property change, time events. Uh, but big part of sequence diagram and simulation uh, and uh, modeling is operations and call operation action uh, recording is a little bit tricky. So in this video, we, in sample, we demonstrate a small case how to do it. Here we have a system uh, block. Uh, we have part A. Both of them have operation, uh, has operation print with the parameter. This operation as a method, as a method, has this uh, activity diagram which uh, gets parameters that uh, from this operation you see here uh, print uh, parameter comes here and then uh, we call this uh, opaque uh, behavior with the script to print you see just straightforward print of that parameter right here so that will be printed you know into the console here and we can put duration constraint here you see like uh, i used this duration constraint here to add it here so that will be executed uh, when we execute uh, this operation this or this one operation right and here in this uh, block we have this behavior where we input the string parameter so value specification so just as the text right uh, pretty much you can go here change you know one and this this position two and that goes in as a parameter, calls this operation, we print that operation. Actually, we call this operation and print. And uh, here to call this operation, we, uh, uh, in this block, we call ourself, we pass that ourself as an object, and then we read part of that object as an A. So A is the part read structural feature, right? Reads, and then we pass that uh, result into call operation action as a target. So this operation is called not from this system, but from actually this one. We could call directly from our uh, system block, right? But then, then it would not be represented as a, another, another swim lane, right? And here is another way to do it. You know, we can change the context. So here we change the context with real structural feature action, but also we can change the context with the swim lane. And the swim lane represents this part. And then the, here we input the text into, and call this operation. Okay, so now let's simulate and see how it works. You see, okay. So we print once. And then we wait because of that duration constraint and we print twice and again we wait because of that duration constraint. So it's a little bit tricky to see when we wait, uh, what's the duration, right? So that's why we use simulation config where we use this uh, sequence generator and we said, okay, we will use the timestamp, true, and then we attach it. So now when we will simulate here, so we see that the duration is after the first uh, call operation action and then the, the next one is again here but this duration is likely comes from uh, this one when it calls when it calls this operation here so it calls prints and then waits here and then goes to the next step that's why we see that duration even this duration is here we see the duration here is zero and then wait and then nine Okay, so thank you. So this is a little bit uh, technical uh, video, but it actually represents uh, how to use uh, as a pattern the uh, call operation actions. And uh, please use the sample, which is available in documentation. And let me know if you have questions.